Time for another episode of the Penn State Baseball Show as the Penn State Baseball team has its home opener on Thursday at Netherfield at Nebrano Park with UMass Lowell coming to town, Brian Tripp and Tyler Millen. And Tyler, we're going to talk to Bobby Marsh here in just a moment, an opportunity to play for the second season of his career at Netherfield at Lebrano Park, a Belfont native who's having a great start, like so many guys, great starts to this 2024 campaign. But I know there's so much excitement around the home opener on Thursday and getting to see the renovations made to Medler Field. Yeah, absolutely. You mentioned the new renovations, the new wall, new video board, new playing surface. A lot of excitement uh, around this around this new renovation for Penn State baseball. And it's a team that is exciting offensively. As you mentioned, JT Marr hitting 439. It's 47th in the country. Very impressive with him. Matt Maloney hitting 353. This offense... A new field, a lot to be excited about for this weekend. Yeah, I think you're touching on some of that depth, and we'll get into that with Bobby Marsh here coming up. And let, In fact, let's chat with Bobby right now on this week's episode of the Penn State Baseball Show. Great to have Bobby Marsh as our guest this week. Bobby, I know you're so excited to get back home, play here at Medler Field at Lebrano Park. Off to a great start this season, but the home openers this week. How excited are you and the rest of the guys in the group? Uh, I'm very excited. Um, with the construction being done all fall, all winter, I think we had one official practice out on the <laughs> field. Um, with the new group that we have, uh, a lot of guys don't even know the experience of playing on a field like Medler, the surface, um, the fans, like, for example, the, the dollar dog nights on Tuesdays. Um, I, we're all excited to finally be home. We've been on the road for four weeks. Um, I think that we're all just really excited to finally be home and play in front of the home crowd. You know, I was talking about this last week, I think with JT, that it's interesting that, you know, you want to be at home, you want to sleep in your own bed and you want to play in front of your home fans. But being on the road, how has that helped bring this group together to start the season? And obviously in a baseball season, there are going to be ups and downs. And it seems like this team's had a really good response every time a little adversity has hit so far this year. Um, I think the biggest thing about being on the road for sure is that um, like the bus rides, um, hanging out in the conference room, uh, all the doubleheader days of being with each other for eight plus hours. I think that it's really helped build a a really good culture of a positive atmosphere. Um, Going back off of what you said with the adversities, um, we just have such a tight, tight knit group that was built over all of these road trips and bonding with each other and just spending all the time that we've had together. Um, It's kind of built a very tight team that um, like, no matter what happens, we're always going to give it our all every single day. If we feel like we aren't playing well, like we're going to go back, like think about it, kind of reflect on what we did, like what we did good, what we need to improve on. And then from there, the next day we'll come out and respond with and play with a chip on our shoulder. You mentioned that culture. When did you start to sense that this is a group that, and obviously there's a long way to go, but was going to come together really well with so many different faces, different staff, obviously. I think the buy-in to what Coach Gambino and his staff have brought has been really high. But was that something you could feel over the summer when you started to get to know everyone in the fall, or or did it happen maybe earlier this spring? Um, I could definitely feel it starting to shift in the fall, 100%. -hmm. Um, Coach Gambino has taught us to have a team first approach. Um, what can we do to help the team win? It's like as much of an individual sport as we were talking about before it is like, yeah, it, we're, we're, we're representing Penn state baseball. We're, we're representing the name on the front of the Jersey. So, um, I could definitely feel it at the beginning of the fall, maybe halfway through that guys were starting to buy into the team first approach. And then I could definitely tell by the end of the first weekend into Stanford that every guy was bought in for Penn state baseball and for the university and for all the guys around us for sure. Yeah. It's an interesting topic. And I know you and I were batting this back and forth, no pun intended with baseball show here uh, beforehand, but having a team first approach, how does that then carry over to your individual approach when you're at the plate and trying to do things that you want to do during your game, you know, for the casual observer or the baseball fan, How do those two elements really marry together to allow the team to have the success it's had to this point and you individually, the success that you've had coming off a really strong year last year where you were a third team all conference. 
Uh, I definitely think that putting the team first kind of 100% shifted my approach. Um, last year, I was definitely um, had a little bit more strikeouts than I wanted just because there were times last year where I feel like I had to do it all for myself. And then this year being introduced to the team approach and really praising it and working through it as a process, I would go up to the plate this year and just be like, what can I do to get to the next guy? Like, what can I do? to help our offense win every single at bat in each pitch. Like that's one of the things that coach Puccio and coach Lawazo has said is win this pitch and being able to win the pitch, win an at bat leads to bringing up another guy in the lineup, which leads to them doing the same exact thing, which allows honestly our whole lineup to be successful. hundred percent. Yeah. You're sitting at 325, but then I think six walks, seven strikeouts. I know you like that ratio. Where do you feel like you're at? at the plate right now granted it's still pretty early in the year and can't wait to get back here and get some warm weather here at home too yeah for sure i'm excited um definitely a great start to the season but got to give a shout out to every other guy in the lineup uh, yeah. i know adam's going off with uh, i think he has three homers probably four or five doubles tk with two homers billy with two doubles jt hitting in the where somewhere in the 400s grant with three homers um Maloney's right up there. Like every guy in the starting lineup and every guy that's been getting at-bats has gotten their job done. Yeah, how would you describe the lineup that you've had so far this season, you know, passing the baton? Joe, everyone seems like they're just passing the baton. You talked about that approach from one guy to the other where you have the trust where, yeah, today may be my day, maybe I get it done, but I also know I'm going to have that protection in the lineup. You know, Kyle can go out and run the bases and steal bases. How would you Mm -hmm. describe the lineup you have? Uh, I could, I would 100% say that we're very versatile. Um, we have the power aspect with Adam, Grant, Joey. Um, like every, Honestly, I feel like our line is very powerful in general. Um, a lot of the guys are getting the bat on the ball, so we got the contact aspect and then we got the speedsters like Joe and Kyle. Like I think that um, our offensive unit as a total is very versatile and we're figuring out how to produce in all the different aspects of the offensive category. You talked about the pride in wearing the Penn State jersey, being a local kid from Belfon and knowing what this university means to this community and everyone across the state. How much pride do you take in representing your your hometown school and Penn State? And what does it mean to wear that Penn State jersey? Uh, it means more than anything. I grew up coming to Penn State baseball games. Um for as long as I could remember it, it was always asking my dad, hey dad, when can we go to the next Penn State baseball game? Um it just means the world to me to be able to represent that hometown team wearing the blue and white that I grew up wearing to school every single Friday um, in the spring being like, I got a baseball game, but I need to still need to root for the Nittany Lions because that's where I want to be one day. Do you remember when was the first time you, you walked through the gates, whether it was for a Spikes game or a Penn State game here at Mother Field? Um, so I moved here whenever I was seven years old, and I think that my first Penn State game was probably – Whenever I was eight years old, I think I got done with a little league game on a Saturday. And my dad was like, hey, we're going to go over to State College and go watch Penn State play. So I, I would believe probably within the first couple of months of being up here. You know, we do have, uh, I think, quite a bit of alumni who are watching this show. Do you remember any of the names that you came to the games and, and watched growing up? You know, the, the Jordan Serankas, the Joey DeBernardises, uh, Sean Deegans of the world. I think that would be kind of the era when you were when you were just a, a kid like eight, nine, ten years old. And I'm also I'm dating myself here because I was probably already announcing the games at that time. Yeah, uh, I definitely think that I remember Sean for sure. I think that was one of the names that I remember. Awesome. Bobby, as this team continues to grow, what are the next steps you you guys want to put together as you wrap up non-conference, at least the weekend non-conference action, and get ready for Big Ten play coming up with Michigan too? Um, I think that our biggest thing right now is uh, really excelling in the fundamentals. Um, we were talking about it last week. Um, like we played really good against Virginia. Like that was the way that we need to play. Like despite losing the the energy in the dugout, like Coach Gambino said, like we were never out of it. Like we knew that all we needed was one more guy. We needed one more guy up in the lineup and we were going to make some stuff happen. And like, like Joe hitting a ball to the wall, Bryce hitting a ball to the wall, me hitting a ball to the wall. Like we were just a couple inches away. And like baseball is a game of inches. Like as long as we stick to the fundamentals and stay with that team team first approach. I think that we're going to be really good. 
Um, if we can carry that into the weekend and keep our focus at a high level and keep the intensity going, I think that um, it's definitely going to prepare us for Michigan. You know, in a sport where it's so defined by failure, right? 325 is a, a good average right now. I know you want to be higher, but that means you're having success only a third of the time. You know, you talk about that game at Virginia, played really well, but didn't get the result. How how do you stay focused as a ball player on the process of getting to where you want to be instead of just what the result of an at-bat or a game may be? Um, it's definitely – Definitely has to start with our controllables as well as like the process. Um, I think that with a game of failure, like you have to to measure your wins and your successes in little things. Like for me as being a hitter, it's did I see the ball well? Um, mm -hmm. Did I put a good swing on the ball? Do I feel confident in the box? Um, I feel like that's that's a big thing with our offensive unit as well as like, am I going to win this pitch? Like, am I prepared enough to go into this at bat and exceed regardless if I get on base? or get out like just as long as as i'm doing what i need to do hitting the ball hard putting it in play like putting the pressure on defense on the defense for sure is definitely one of the things that i really have in my process in order to define whether or not i have success last one what do you think of the new grass here i'm sitting up in the press box and i see a couple of players out there right now walking around bare feet out on the out on the field it's it's definitely a lot better than last year. The upgrades are amazing. I um, haven't really been out on the grass yet. I'll probably go out and do that um, before practice at some point. But from what I've heard, the, the upgrades that happened are unbelievable. And I'm very grateful that we finally got that. What does it mean? I lied one more. What does it mean? Obviously, I know Coach Gambino and the staff have gone to bat for you guys, but also to have an administration that's dedicated to supporting the program and giving you the tools, the facility, everything that you need, mental health, nutrition, travel upgrades, giving the program what it needs. What's it mean to see that as a student athlete, knowing that everyone here at Penn State has your back to give you the tools to win and become a pro out there on the field? Um, I, I'm blessed to be able to be here and get all of these upgrades and be around a, a staff that wants that for everyone. Um, mm -hmm. At the beginning of the year, whenever Coach Gambino came in, he said there are going to be guys that are going to be playing professional baseball here. Like, I'm just going to be a, a resource and a part of the way. Like, I'm going to be here to help you pave and make your way up there, which um, getting all the upgrades, upgrading our travel, um, the updated – um, nut nutrition stations, like everything like that. It's um, I'm very fortunate to be able to be here whenever um, we're kind of getting all these things in order to be treated like a professional baseball player. I think it's awesome. It is. It's going to be awesome to see the team playing at home this weekend. Bobby, have a great weekend. Thanks so much. Thank you, Tripp. It's a pleasure. You know, it's interesting, too, to hear there from Bobby Tyler that, you know, in the fall, there wasn't that opportunity to get out there on the field because they had it ripped up. You know, the LED lights, there's so many things behind the scenes for the team that he referenced the investment in the baseball program here. And I think it's exciting just to see the investment made for Penn State baseball. And that's something that's happened across the Big Ten, as you've had teams like Purdue and Indiana and obviously Michigan of late make those runs, Maryland, into the postseason and deep into the postseason. You're seeing the level of competition increase, not only at the top of the league, but from the bottom of the league. And Penn State, I know, is really excited about the opportunity to have this facility and a first-class facility and the support from the administration, the coaching staff, from top to bottom to get an opportunity to have a facility like that. Already a great one, but even an improved great facility with that great view here at home. Yeah, absolutely. Anytime you can have a commitment from the administration, from a, from a facility's perspective, it's going to elevate the program and elevate the entirety of the conference. I think you see, as you mentioned, teams like Maryland, who produced key guys like Matt Shaw and teams like Michigan that have gone to Omaha and played for national championships. These teams that have great facilities can produce in the Big Ten. And despite the northern market, they can, they can play at a high level and on the national level. So being, being able to have a facility like this at Medler Field at Lebrano Park and all the excitement that comes with it is, is just something that's going to elevate this program for sure.
Yeah, and I think we're really close to seeing a, a couple of Penn Staters get back to the MLB. Justin Hagenman right now with the Boston Red Sox. He's traded over to the Red Sox, joined their organization. Taylor Lehman's battling the Phillies organization. And so many guys of recent years have an opportunity to continue to climb the ranks. Matt Wood and Kyle Verbitsky, you know, the list goes on and on. It's a testament to the type of player and the type of development you can get at a place like Penn State. So we were talking about the depth of the offense and I think it's exciting now to see this team come home and fans will have a chance to see this 2024 version for the first time and as I talked about there with Bobby what's impressive to me is Tyler every time they've hit a speed bump and I know I don't think they played their best baseball over the weekend against Harvard but everything they've learned from and grown from those experiences throughout the year he discussed it with Virginia you saw it earlier in the year in the opening series even down in Cary North Carolina bouncing back after falling in the final game against Stanford. This team has really shown that they want to learn and want to learn. It's a really coachable group. And yeah, you have veteran guys, but there's so many young guys in the lineup as well. You have that balance. I think we'll continue to see that growth. And that's what you're looking to see this weekend, continued growth going against the Riverhawks. Yeah, and that growth is something that that is spearheaded by some of the leaders on this team, like JT Marr and Adam Cesari and Taven Kelly, guys that have been around not just Penn State, but college baseball as a whole. And I think that's starting to feed into the entirety of this lineup. You see guys like Joe Jaconski, who's really spearheading this offense from the top of the lineup, and that's bringing things down and elevating the entirety of the lineup from an on-base perspective and just being able to generate runs and generate offense. And that is something that is going to elevate this team as a whole, is being able to put guys in position to score and drive guys in and have key at bats with two outs. And just having that veteran poise from so many guys in this lineup is something that can, can drive this team going forward. And no doubt about that. And I know that Bobby talked about that uh, a little bit earlier. Well, we can't wait to get to the ballpark, Tyler. It should be uh, some pretty nice weather here this weekend. Fingers crossed, right? Everything holds out here in the early spring. You never know what you're going to get in happy Valley, but Tyler, appreciate it. Can't wait to see you at the ballpark. Yeah, should be a great weekend.